Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at the Kauda Welsh Greenlandic word for word. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this series, it is a, well, it's like a combination of a phrase book and a textbook, so it's kind of an interesting series. It's not designed to teach you as much as a, uh, as a textbook would, like if you went to a college or something, or to do uh, really intensive classes. But it's not designed to be just a phrase book. It actually does cover grammar and a lot of things like that. And uh, one of the cool things about these books is that they cover pretty exotic languages like Greenlandic. I'll actually go over some of the other ones a little bit later. But here you have uh, one other three in one series, which is uh, Egyptian, the hieroglyphics, like actual hieroglyphics. And. Um, Sanskrit, Latin in one book, so holy languages, three in one. You have Luxembourgish, Faroese, Aztecish, uh, Mayan, Quechua, Guarani, Lakota, and um, all of these people who uh, wrote the books, as far as I understand it, actually live in the countries where the languages are spoken. They had to really learn it that way. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an interesting uh, way of making these books because the idea is that they have a different understanding from what you would really really need and just the real real basics so you're not going to be getting weird sentences and things like that just really really practical everyday things so it's really really conversationally driven one of the downsides is uh, about this series by the way is that if you're interested in learning how to read the scripts outside of this Egyptian one uh, they don't usually really introduce different writing systems. Even for the Sanskrit, they'll show you the alphabet, but they don't actually use it. <laughs> Just kind of at the beginning. And uh, so that kind of is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, outside of that, the uh, series is really good. It's very simple. They have a lot of exotic languages like this. They're also very small. Uh, compare that to what I just reviewed here with the Japanese course. Yeah. A little bit of a difference. And uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, the books actually all have uh, kind of a neat feature. They have flaps on the covers. And th these have additional information that you would want to look at quickly. Uh, yes, no, excuse me, thank you, things like that. Uh, pronunciation, things that are you know a lot different than you would have in your own language. In this case, German. Uh, in this case, a little bit of information, too, about the fact that Greenlandic was actually had a different spelling system up until 1973, and then they actually have a much more phonetic system now. And then for here, for example, you get, uh, I speak a little, and they give you different examples. And you'll notice underneath, er, so you'll get the, uh, the Greenlandic, and then these are, you know, you put them in there where those three dots are. This is the list underneath. So they'll give you a different, uh, what is it, a few different options for what you want to say. And then they'll give you a grammatical direct translation. And then they'll give you the German translation. In this case, if you look at the translation in the middle, which is the direct translation, that's really, really useful. And in this book in particular, it's actually very needed. Uh, as you can see here, speak a little, speak, normally, uh, I. <laughs> so it's like uh, a little bit of a different mindset whereas the German just says I speak a little you know like you would in English um, and uh, so another cool thing here is they actually add to really help you with the grammar uh, there are little lines here if you notice these little lines are going through the word right so this is actually one word but it's broken into three parts and I believe they do this with actually most of the courses in general or most of their books in general which is to show, uh, you'll see the same like a little line connecting these words, right? So this last part, punga, would be I, meaning I'm doing it. So it'd be an ending like you'd get in, say, Spanish, but that would be the indication being that you're the one doing it. The part in the middle is usually, and then the other part here is, you know, the, the idea to speak, o kalut. So that's actually really cool how they set this up so that you can actually you know, learn what the grammar is, how it breaks apart. 
And so after that, uh, on the back, by the way, they have the numbers and they have all the abbreviations. Because uh, these would be pretty long words to put in otherwise. But uh, the case system, for example, in Greenlandic is very, very different from the case system in, say, Latin, German, or French, um, Russian. So, you know, you really need to uh, go over that a few times, and you really need the abbreviations, I find. Uh, yeah, let's see. So they give you information about the, the country, the language, to get into the pronunciation, the alphabet, and... Uh, where do we get the first part of the grammar? Here we go. So they explain that it's like a, uh, almost like Legos, right? So Greenlandic is one of those Lego-like languages where you kind of build words, you know, to build one word you use different Legos or different parts. And uh, so that's kind of cool. For example, they give you here the word for river and then another word that means uh, big. So suak, it means big. And uh, so you put the two words together, big river, you know, wide river. So they'll give you kind of a, a little bit of a nuanced, but translation. But uh, so you'll get that here. Here's a fjord, and uh, that means fjord. So big or wide fjord, and they show you the uh, part where it comes together, and they keep the little line through there. You can see there, so that you know it's still two different parts or two different words uh, coming together. So let's see. They also break down things like the uh, the nouns and how they put them in here into three classes. Now, I don't know if that's always the case with Greenlandic, since most of what I've learned from Greenlandic is with this book. But uh, yeah, they go over they'll go over quite a lot of things actually. Let's see, here are the uh, possess possessive endings. I guess that get added onto nouns. Here, and here's where they cover fairly early on the different cases in the book, or I mean in the language. And then uh, they explain in detail, kind of short. It takes a while to get used to, honestly, because it's so different, but they, uh, they give you a lot of examples. So that's really, really helpful. And uh, here are the verbs, again, three classes for the verbs as well. They give you the examples. And they give you really simple stuff first, and then they kind of move on to the other endings, you know that are really needed to uh, speak the language properly or to be able to ask things or speak with people. Let's see. So here's a little bit of a list of uh, really important suffixes. They, you know, they don't give you everything, but they just give you, you know, like the really, really basic stuff that you really need. But then they move into, well, you see here too, they'll give you, tell you what it, what each part is about, which each page, like, uh, time before something, uh, it's a little bit of a hard translation, but before and after, uh, for time. So explaining uh, how that would be expressed in uh, Greenlandic, and then we have time and date. And then, then we get into the uh, yeah, no, or I mean yes, no, and uh, actual phrases, and then so at that point you should have a, you can go, you, know, you don't actually have to do the grammar part, you can focus mostly on the phrases, but, um, you know, if you do the grammar part first, then you kind of have an idea. You can actually do it pretty much any way you really want. They actually go over, they actually have a really nice setup for the book, and really cool too, is you, uh, if you don't get the CDs, you still can get some of the main uh, greetings, you can actually get an idea of what those sound like. Uh, with the QR codes that are actually put in the phrase section of the book. And so towards the end, uh, they cover things. They cover a lot of cultural things and whatnot, like how many words does Greenlandic really have for snow? Is it really like hundreds or something like that? And they say, no, it's not really that many. It's But they do have a lot of different words for uh, different types of snow, like a very fresh snow and uh, snow that's when it's snowing and staying, when the snow stays, it doesn't melt. <laughs> Quite a lot of different words for snow, so... Let's see. Let's see, staying the night, food and drink, buying pictures if you're sick, and then we get a suffix list. So... Yeah, 
kind of kind of important, you know, stuff you'd want to really be able to look at. So they do give you lists for these things. And uh, let's see, then from their nice list they give you is the uh, declension of the nouns, and they break it down by class. So I explain here how you need to uh, decline it. I believe in the previous page or is it the page after? I think. Yeah, they explain what endings you need to replace to get a different, because uh, they don't cover all the cases. They explain how to, you know, basically, you know, cut the ending off of this particular used case, and then you can add different endings, so. Really, really nice setup, and uh, yeah. And they give you a little bit of advice on other books you can use to, uh, more advanced books, dictionaries, grammars, things like that. Uh... Well, here's a plug for the, um, the CDs, and uh, only eight euro. And then we have Map of Greenland. So this company also sells maps that are all well, five languages: Russian, Spanish, German, English, and French. Uh, the maps are apparently very, very hard to rip. Uh, they're not affected by water. You can write on them like paper, and they work with GPS, so that's kind of cool. Then we get into the uh, dictionary, German Greenlandic, and then Greenlandic German, and uh, yeah. So it's a really cool book, a really cool way to uh, get introduced to something, particularly because they are smaller, they're easy to take, and they're really affordable. Uh, I believe they're roughly about ten dollars, maybe. Yeah, eight. It's eight dollars. So or eight euro. So, yeah, it's a very, very good series. I'd actually really recommend it for uh, harder to find languages like Greenlandic or, you know, like we have. Well, Lakota has a little bit more available, but, you know, a lot of the stuff is very simple, so it gets you into the really, really practical things that you need to. So, pretty cool, pretty cool series. Uh, only available in German, that is maybe a downside if you don't speak German, but, you know, if you do or you have a passive understanding, it's a pretty useful series.